This is something else. We're at the oldest megalithic settlement in the whole of Britain. So just behind me is what's called the Nap of Hower on Papa Westray, one of the most northerly islands of the Orkneys. It's an incredible site. It's the oldest Neolithic house pretty much on the planet. It's one of the oldest structures that has lived in on the planet. So this is a remarkable, remarkable place. So this is the oldest known house really, or settlement, most certainly in Britain, um, but possibly in the world. I mean, obviously Gebekli Tepe, but that was more of a ceremonial center. Uh, whereas this was definitely the living quarters of families going back to over 3,600 BC. So it's almost 6,000 years ago we're talking about here. Um, there's uh, been um, Unstan Ware pottery found here, which uh, potentially that means this is where it was created before it was found in the Unstan Chamber on mainland Orkney. But I'm absolutely blown away by this. This is a very, very important place. This is some work that's been done here by Nicholas Cope in his book, The Nap of Howard, The Origins of Geometry. And he goes into detail, making it very clear that this was one of the earliest places, if not the earliest place, where the golden section was used. Um, also, he found evidence of the megalithic yard throughout this site. So this backs up Alexander Thom's theory that the megalithic culture used a standardized unit of measure. Now, you have to crouch down to get in here, so this clearly wasn't the domain of giants. But here, along the side, you can see some kind of bed, partitions, a doorway through to the smaller chamber, uh, a bowl here for working with the crop, niches and windows. And these here, these are really interesting. So we have like very thin megaliths kind of creating a partition, not only in this part, but also in the smaller dwelling next door. Also, we face out towards, pretty much towards the west, but it's actually 27 degrees north of west. So some research needs to be carried out of exactly what the astronomy is here and what they were watching through this area, because clearly, if they're using ancient metrology and geometry, they're most probably using the stars and the moon and the sun to help with their uh, agriculture that they were working with here, some of the oldest in Britain. So clearly, this looks like some kind of grinding bowl because we know they were growing crops here at least uh, between 3,600 and 3,100 BC. That's the exact dating of the occupation of this site. And it's even believed it could have even built, be built on an older site that was made of midden, like shells, going back potentially for even 5,000 BC. So this is quite, you know, this is why this is so important. This is why Nick's done some very important work finding the geometry here and the fact that that could be the key to unlocking ancient metrology and sacred geometry in ancient sites around the planet. So we have these beautiful niches here that are almost like, you know, areas where they would place their food or their offerings or their candles to bring light, because this was covered by wood. It's known that because um, there's evidence of wooden post holes, which you can't see now, and it probably would have had a roof made of turf, like the grass you can see around here. And this is how you get through to the smaller chamber. So we're going to walk through here and take a look um, at that one just in a moment. Now it's not for someone six foot tall. This is for like uh, people to crawl through, unless obviously it was a lower floor. So we just come into the smaller of the two dwellings here at the Nap of Hower. We we'll walk through the small passageway and now we're in the second one. What's really interesting about this is that the interior measurement of the large dwelling is the same as the outer measurement of this dwelling. And this is where Nicholas noted some very interesting anomalies. Also the point of entrance 
the kind of um, almost like the place where you enter the site. Some people um, call this a very important spot on both areas. If you they, they match equally, and the distance between them marks uh, the golden section. I'll show some diagrams in the video from Nick, so you get some ideas of what I'm talking about here. But here again, we have the very thin stones creating uh, barriers, uh, partitions in the walls. This is the main entrance heading out 27 degrees north of west, um, out into the ocean. Now you must remember, this was probably a lake around 3500, 3600 BC, before it was the sea. So this, this would have been an abundant area. You had the sea, you had lake creatures, you could eat fish and so forth. Uh, you've got abundant crops, probably farming animals as well. So this, although it's not hugely megalithic, the age of it is extremely interesting and important. And the dry stone walling here is excellent quality, which probably influenced the Ness of Brodgar, Mays Howe and other sites on Orkney. It actually reminds me of Carrow Moor in Ireland, uh, a very similar style in some of the cairns there. So we have to question the dating there, because some of the dating is almost exactly the same as this. So was it the same people doing this, or completely separate cultures suddenly deciding to work with stone? So I wonder how high the roof was here, because this is very, very uh, low. So were they crawling around in here? does seem like that. You have these little niches here all around the edge, all around the eastern edge over here as well. Very interesting. Obviously a fire in the middle, there's probably a hole in the ceiling to uh, keep it all warm. And these are at least five feet thick, some of these walls as well. So this was a very, very well put together site, which only got discovered really within the last hundred or so years when extreme storms blew the sand and rubble and uh, mud away from it. And then another storm exposed it even more. And so this is why we see it as it is today. It would never have been found otherwise. So this was obviously a big influence on places like Scarra Bray on the west coast of the Orkney mainland. Also some of the other chambers and cans you find on Orkney as well. And so, but this was here first. And with the midden mound that was found underneath here. So did it all originate here? Did the megalithic yard really originate here? Did the sacred geometry principles of the golden section originate here? Or is it just, was they following their intuition? Was it part of the natural cycle of being so close to nature that they would naturally work with the golden section? Because that's what the human body is based on, that's what flowers are based on, that's what everything is based on, going all the way from the microcosm to the macrocosm to galaxies and so forth. And so it could have been a natural instinct to work with these principles, especially as you're living in this space. And Nick even suggests that this, these both represent the human bodies. The larger, er, larger one just over there represents like the mother and this one, small one, represents the child. And he sees the nature of the geometry and the metrology kind of suggest this. There's even work he's done on chakras, suggesting the chakras of ancient Indian tradition may have been kind of integrated into the layout. So there's a lot going on here, even though it just looks like two small dwelling places. So this is the passageway. In the distance there is the larger chamber, and then this comes into the smaller chamber here. And you can just see the beautiful way it's been put together, amazingly, almost uh, 6,000 years ago. So this is a fantastic site, really special place, really beautiful area. It's very windy today, so I apologize for the sound. No doubt it was windy in prehistoric times too. They also had to deal with that as well. So this is incredible. Absolutely blowing my mind this place. It's amazing to be at the most one of the most northerly and the oldest megalithic home on Britain. Amazing.